Hi and welcome to this video on the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Now the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus says that the area under a graph, which we can call f of x, little f of x, is given by another function which is the antiderivative, which is big F of x. So in simple terms, if we look at this, at this, the integral from b to a of f of x dx equals g of b minus g of a where g is the antiderivative of f of x. So if we just consider this as a graph And we have a curve. Here we have A, point A on the x-axis. And here we have B on the x-axis. Then this area between A and B of the function f of x, which is this line here, is given by another function, which is big F of x. So to get f of x, we get the derivative of b and subtract. We get the antiderivative of b and subtract from the antiderivative of a. Now another way of thinking about the fundamental theorem of calculus is f of x, big F of x, can be considered as the rate of change of area equals the integral from x to a of a function f of t dt where a is equal to or less than x is equal to or less than b. So if we look at this in a graph form we have a curve again. We have A, B, B is here, and we have X here. So this area here would be considered as F of X. And the rate of increase of f of x is given by this function, f of x. As x increases, f of x increases. And this is the line function t, f of t. So, what does this mean? Let's have a look at some examples. So, if we have f of x... equals x squared from x equals 1 to x equals 2 from the integral of 2 to 1 from 1 to 2 of x squared equals x cubed over 3 when we integrate and this is f of x. So this is f of x and then when sorry when we differentiate when we differentiate big F of x which is this we get back our original function which is f of x. And we'll have a look at some examples of that. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of examples where the antiderivative of the function little f of x then gives us another function big F of x which is the area under that curve or the curve which is that function. So for example if we have 
f of x equals x squared from integral from 1 to 2 x squared dx we get x cubed over 3 so then we would substitute where x equals 2 and x equals 1 and subtract so this would be x cubed for the 2 would be 2 cubed over 3 minus 1 cubed over 3 this equals 8 over 3 minus 1 over 3 which equals 7 over 3 so that is the area under the curve x squared from x equals 2 to x equals 1. When we write this, we write, usually write x cubed over 3, 2 to 1, this being the upper limit. And this being the lower limit. So when we say that this is the curve x squared or the function f x equals x squared we're considering the area from 1 to 2 and the area we have is this under the curve which is given by f of x which is another function which is x cubed over 3 and the actual area is 7 over 3 let's have a look at uh, some simple functions and how they're related to rate of change of area so if we had the function f of x equals 1 so this would mean that this is the x-axis this is the y-axis at 1 so that's x equals 1 so we have the area in increasing 1, 2, 3. So this area would be increasing this f of x as x increases. So we would have f of x, which is the rate of increase of area, equals the integral from b to a of f of x. And we can see for where x equals 1, the integral from b to a of f of x, so the rate of increase of f of x is also just x. So when x is 1, this area is 1, x is 1. When x is 2, the area is 2. When x is 3, similarly, the area is 3. Okay, let's take this a little further. So f of x equals 2. So again, we have x. Here, x equals 2. And we're going up like this. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3 on the x-axis. So we're considering now 
this change in area and it's the rate of increase is going up as x increases so the area increases as x increases so for this we would have when f, f of x equals 2 when we integrate we get the area underneath which is 2x so f of x equals 2 at 1 when x equals 1 area equals 2 when x equals 2 area equals 4 so we can see that the rate of increase of the area f of big f of x is 2x Similarly, if we carry on and we get f of x equals x, we get a line where f of x equals x, and the area underneath here, as we go one. 2, 1, 2, 3, and that gradually increasing, so as x increases, the area increases, we get f of x equals x squared over 2. So this shows us that the integral of the function f of x is given by another function which is the area underneath that line or that curve. The area is given by the integral of that function. Okay, let's have another look at the fundamental theorem of calculus which says the derivative of the big function f of x which is the area gives us the original function so if we have f of x equals x plus 1 if we draw that so it would be a line went something like that and this would be minus 1. Here we'd have x plus 1. And then we're interested in the area which is here. This is x, this is y. So the area is given by a half x plus 1 which is the base and then x plus 1 which is the height so the function we get is a half when we multiply out the brackets we get x squared plus 2x plus 1 and this gives us f of x which is x squared over 2 plus x plus a half and when we differentiate when we do the derivative of this so the derivative of f of x equals x plus 1 which is the function, original function but also if we have 
f of x as x cubed over 3 plus 7 and x cubed over 3 plus 6 and we take the derivative of these to get our area so which would be f of x we get x squared and similarly on this one we get x squared so this 7 and the 6 which are the constants disappear when we dis when we dif when we differentiate so this is the reason when we integrate we use c So when we have, when we take an integral which isn't a definite integral, we always have plus c at the end to represent this constant which has, dif which has disappeared. So in summary, we have d by dx, the integral of f of x dx equals 